Hi, this is Luke Yang there from Realty X Lite. And this video, I'm gonna share you how I made this abundant scene uh, using just Blender. So the entire project will be available on my Patreon. So you can explore and analyze everything on what's going on here. So without any further ado, let's jump straight to the video. I go to ArtStation and Pinterest to find an inspiration online. And there's a bunch of them that I can find, but I can't make all of them. So I just stick to this abandon scene and then I find more references like this. So even though this is an abundant place, I want it to look like more emotional and I want it to give like calm and relaxing feels to it. Some of the references are a bit too messy and old and a bit too grungy. So I feel like I need to balance those looks of how like how old and grungy I want for the mansion because I need to pull the emotional right. So I keep this in my mind early on. Uh, then I download a bunch of reference and then stitch them together in pure ref. And this makes the workflow pretty sufficient because in Photoshop we need to adjust the resolutions of the canvas quite a lot, which is automatically handled by this piece of software. And once you use this uh, pure ref, then you might hardly go back to any other software when it comes to reference. Once I'm done with the reference, then I export all the images one file and then I uh, import that image from image editor in Blender then I start modeling like the reference. So the way I model here is not exactly the same as um, how I did there in Patreon and this is because um, what I did right now is not like the best way of modeling the entire mansion and how I did there in Patreon is more efficient and easy to follow so please don't confuse on that one. I believe this modeling process is fairly simple and even beginner like who have been using Blender for like let's say three to four months, I believe will not find any problems with it. And then like if you've been using Blender for at least one year, there will be no problem at all. So just the mention alone is so simple. You know, right now it just looks so plain and then it doesn't have any like a point of interest. So I look up some like props online and then I found this one. So I quickly model this and then use it on the roof here. And one thing that um, that makes any scene looks good right away is almost always adding more props. But it doesn't help with the compositing too much. Um, but like I said, it helps with the uh, scene looking more realistic quicker. And obviously the size has to be accurate. So simply scale everything according to the real world size at the start of the project, uh, which will help you, you know, save a lot of your time figuring out what's going wrong on the scene. So I add this small little decorative stuff uh, on the wall to avoid the wall looks so flat and plain right now. And you know, even if it's not going to be like the focus point, then adding these little details make the scene looks uh, realistic quicker, which is like a, you know, pretty useful tips. Then I go to Quixel Bridge and then I look for the plants that I wanted to grow on the mansion. Uh, then I download them. And here, one little tips is that uh, when you use or like when you have only one or two plants on the entire scene, then it somehow doesn't look natural, you know. So what I used to do here is I add at least like a minimum of five different plants. And then it usually makes your scene more dynamic and then more convincing. Then I import these plants and start populating on the scene. Um, I don't use particle system for this one and I just did everything manually and then sometimes select a bunch of them and then duplicate them. So which increase the, the workflow and the reason why I don't use particle system is because you know for these types of mansion where it requires like a precise control over the rotation and scale of the plants you know this particle system is not like super efficient in handling those stuff. So it took me quite a bit of time to spread the plants all over the mansion. And I believe I spent like a week just populating this IV and plants all over the place. But one of the reasons why it takes this long is because I don't do this full time because I have my uh, full time job to accomplish every day. Um, but on the overall, it just simply takes a, a bit of time to populate all this in, you know, to cover the entire mansion. Then I add these stairs using Blender internal add-on, which is Archipack. Uh, which saved me a lot of time, but I have to like 
manually tweak on it just a little bit along the way. Then I add this IV uh, following the mesh flow, which makes it more believable instead of just using particle system. Uh, because uh, if I use particle system, um, then there will be a lot of uh, IV that penetrates the stair, uh, which will make it look fake. So I avoid that. Then once I'm done with the scene population, then I start lighting the scene. And you know, it's pretty hard to know exactly how the light will falls on the mesh and how exactly do you want uh, to light your scene. So I tried with volumetric light initially. Uh, then I start to light using EV. And I can't quite get it right. So I render just the volumetric pass using EV. And then I blend with cycles render on compositing. But I'm still not convinced with how it looks right now. So I like it in many ways. You know, I give it many variation to see and, you know, get uh, what light will work for this scene. Uh, so I add all these renders on PureRef and then start comparing it. And as you can see from here, I add this screenshot from Beauty and the Beast uh, to get the feels and, you know, the mood uh, for this scene. Then I start giving textures and materials on the plants and IV. Uh, but I still can't quite happy with the lighting overall. I don't know what's wrong here, but I feel like it's not convincing enough yet. Then I go back to Quixel Bridge and look for a uh, texture that I'm going to use for the piano. And I put the reference on the side so that I can see exactly what I'm looking for. Then I import this texture inside Blender and then I use it for the piano. I believe the white piano looks pretty cool to me, but at the same time, I also feel like the, uh, it makes the mansion, you know, uh, less royal. So I change it to this brownish color, uh, like the reference. Then after I'm done with the piano, then I start texturing the wall. And I want it to be like the reference, so I uh, make it pale greenish blue tone. And instead of this white color for the lining, and I just make it gold, which I believe it more uh, royal feels to it. Then I start adding character and I give uh, a depth of field. So I'm just experimenting on this face. Then I also jump to different angle and light accordingly. And there's so many angles that I feel is off, you know, which I end up um, not using on a final render anyway. Then I often jump to a bunch of different angles and then, you know, move the IV and plants to compensate for that. Then I use grunge texture on the wall because uh, if, if it looks too clean, it kind of looks fake. But I don't want to make it too obvious because I don't want the scene to be like so abundant and old. Remember, I want to make it relaxing and calm. Then I jump to another angles and then tweak the light or the texture. And then sometimes I experiment on the piano a bit and I just cover with uh, cloth and then I feel like nah. So I remove it again. I stay quite a bit of time because I, I'm still not quite sure how I'm going to light this scene. And sometimes the solution can be removing some elements from the scene. As you can see from here in this shot, uh, once I remove these you know, golden lamps, then the scene becomes more interesting. Because the left one is a bit too messy and you know our eyes doesn't know where to rest. So once I feel like I'm kind of done with the lighting, then I start adding the reference character in the scene. Um, this is really, really important because we need to know how the light will fall on the character. And when we recreate the lighting on the real shoot, then it automatically blends with the CGI right away. So that we don't have to like uh, mess around with it a lot later. So I already animated the camera uh, when I reached this stage. And I also use this to preview the flow of the film and then decide on uh, what kind of music will I use for the film.
So we have pre-shooting before we hire an actual model and use this footage to see if the scene we made is going to work or not and also to see how we need to set up the lights and the green screen. And we might also find more interesting angle uh, in this pre-shoot. So we set up everything way ahead of the real shooting. Here we can see some markers on the green screen. Uh, because we initially plan to move the camera in the shoot and then track those camera movement using these markers. But I feel like I don't want to make it more complexity to the tutorial than how it is right now. So we end up placing the camera in the tripod and then just make it still. And then we move the camera in post. And then we even act like how our real model will act and then try to figure out uh, what are the problems that we can encounter and then what could be the uh, solution. Then we hire an actual model. Then we start shooting the scene. But even in this stage, uh, we're still not 100% sure on what color of the dress will work for our scene. So we end up buying uh, these two color, this yellow and gray. And then we shoot each scene twice. Uh, one for the yellow and one for the gray. We use Unreal Engine while shooting this scene because Unreal Engine has these live green screen keying features which is super helpful uh, seeing the lighting and the camera angles. We place the character here so that we can see exactly how we need to light our subjects. We can clearly see it here. So I asked my buddy to rest his palm on the table and grab it. Then I can see that in real time of how it will look on the final render. Then he precisely grabs the wood of the CGI environment. So the way we shoot here is a bit tricky and expensive in a way, but compared to how they did it in big budget movie or like a music video, then it's nothing. So I believe it deserves separate tutorial for this one. And because of that reason, I don't add this shooting face in the Patreon and here in this YouTube video. So I'm going to make separate video for this one. <laughs> and guys, all the behind the scene footage and some bloopers that you might find it funny are there in my Patreon. So you can see those stuff if you want it to. Then once we are done with the shooting, then I start keying out the green screen on Blender. Then I export it to be ready to use it as a plane, including the, uh, the alpha. Then I import the key out footage using image as plane add-on. Then I place it on top of the table. Uh, then I start tweaking the light a bit and sometimes the texture uh, to blend the CGI and the uh, footage a bit more. Then after I'm done with that, then I start rendering it out. So the rendering took me quite a bit of time, uh, even though I'm using a very powerful graphics card and CPU. It takes approximately 18 minutes per frame uh, to render. So there are about 1,800 frames in this film, uh, which is about 22 days of render. But anyway, I feel like it's still worth it. And like I've mentioned in the beginning, uh, there will be a long and detailed format for this tutorial on my Patreon. Uh, along with the final blend file, texture and all the assets. So please consider subscribing to my Patreon so that I can make I like this kind of quality uh, tutorial more often. And um, overall it requires a lot of hard work and dedication for these types of VFX scene. And you might not um, get your desired looks within one or like two renders. But as long as you're not giving up and working on it just a little bit more, and if you can do that, it always reaches to the point where you can be proud of final render. So just never ever give up. Bye bye.